And here it is, the Lionel 2024 Catalog Volume 1, the big book, as they say. Uh, so this is a first impression going through it. So just taking a look at the good, the bad, the ugly uh, first impressions of this catalog. I'll give more of a summary of the items in next Tuesday's edition of What's New in O-Gates, break it down. But let's just see what we've got here. And right here on the cover, we see the 20th anniversary of the Polar Express. Imagine that this is going to be a big part of the catalog. The uh, Polar Express has been big for Lionel now for 20 years. So, And we have some more stuff about the Polar Express. You can go straight to their stuff right here. And introduction to O-scale stuff. I see a Hiawatha. That looks interesting. Some other stuff up here. So let's take a look. Vision line, we've got the triplex. We already know about this. This was released back last fall. So this is information that we've already seen about the triplex. I don't see any new road names. So moving ahead. Uh, this also we've seen before. This is the triplex and its special commemorative set. You can get it all together. And now we move into Legacy. And we've got some Legacy Berkshires uh, based on the uh, nickel plate design. We got nickel plate 755. Road number specific details. So, so let's see. So we've got, uh, again, we've got nickel plate 755. 765, of course, probably the most famous of the nickel plate Berks still out there running today. 777 in Nickel Plate Limited. That's an interesting scheme. I don't think I've uh, seen that before. What else do we have? Uh, okay, and then very similar, we've got the CNO Greenbrier version. Lower headlight, that would make sense with the CNO version. DTNI, okay, that's interesting. Paramarquette 1225, of course. The Paramarquette is almost a clone of the nickel plate Berkshire design. So it makes sense if you're going to make one, make the other. So those are nice. Let's see what we've got here. We've got the CNO 2882s. Yeah, the CNO H7 2882s. These are big locomotives. Let's see, we've got one, two, three, four versions in CNO. What do we have over here? Okay, we've got the same thing in different road names. We've got Rio Grande uh, with a doghouse. Uh, RFNP with a bandy tender. We've got Union Pacific. Interesting. Two Union Pacific. Okay. So a couple of 2882s there. Oh, a 10 wheeler. Okay. So we've got some 10 wheeler 460s. Jersey Central. New York Central and Hudson River, Western Pacific, and regular NYC, and Northern Pacific, seven ninety nine ninety nine. dollars All right, so those are cool-looking look locomotives, probably cool-sounding locomotives as well. Whoops. Next page. All right, so we've got our 10-wheeler as part of a set. We've got some old... Uh, wood type passenger cars from the turn of the 20th century so this is going to be the royal blue so it looks like this is lettered for b and o but if you're also a fan of the central new jersey the redding uh this could also make an appearance on your layout so this is the way they would have lettered it at the turn of the century across the top it was the major cities served and then there was a seal on the cars based on the state of uh, the railroad that owned that particular car. They were divided percentage-wise uh, between the B&O, the Reading, the CNJ. So they would have different state markings for whether it was New Jersey, whether it was Pennsylvania, or whether it was uh, Maryland. Interesting. And here's our Hiawatha. Uh, wow. Lionel Lines Hiawatha. That's colorful. Uh, $1,200 there. Um, yeah, uh, there we've got our passenger first. We've got our accurate beaver tail observation car with our Hiawatha and definitely a nice little scale set there. Looks like we come in two different packs. Whoops. See, we can go back here. 
Yeah, we've got a three-pack of cars and a four-pack of cars. 054 minimum. These are big. And there we go. There is our Hiawatha. Um, but uh, nice. Oh, we have some more Hiawathas. We have another version of the passenger set and a couple of different paint schemes for our Hiawatha. What we have on this page. There we go. And another version. Okay. So those are interesting. And here we have a Hiawatha kind of done up as the Chicago Northwestern. Uh, the 400s, yes, the 400s had a streamlined version for Chicago Northwestern. So uh, kind of similar, kind of sort of, I guess, close enough for some folks. We're having the Milwaukee-style passenger cars again with the beaver tail observation. Uh, so kind of a what-if set here. Oh, and wow, the color just leaps off on you. Seaboard Airline uh, as a Hiawatha set. Well, they were known for their speed, but uh, yeah. Okay, so that's an interesting what-if set in a different road name than what we normally see. Union Pacific. Okay, so they're basically doing the, I think, what was the train? The 49er, I believe it was, was the Union Pacific Streamline steamer did not quite look like a Hiawatha. And again, we've got the uh, Milwaukee-type uh, observation car on here. So uh, another kind of what-if. It's kind of sort of close to a UP trade, but not quite. We move into diesels now. And then we've got our Jeep 9s. These have been in the catalog for a while. We've got some different paint schemes here. N&W in and the Tuscan. And, oh, look, a Jeep 9B. Uh, interesting for Pennsylvania there. So six hundred dollars, you can either get it with the uh, radio antenna. Oh, and, and bang on rustic. That's a nice color scheme. The nineteen uh, seventies version of their scheme. Okay, now we've got an early Conrail without the logo. Those were common around nineteen seventy six, seventy seven. An older style Union Pacific with the old dependable transportation logo. That was, I believe, late fifties, early sixties. We've got it in Conrail, a Penn Central patch for Conrail. I remember those days. And then here we have an old Penn Z marked up as a Conrail Jeep 9B. And then, uh, yes, Union Pacific had those as well, the Jeep 9Bs. Um, and these are equipped with that super base. So it's a dummy unit. Not enough room for a motor in there, but it has the monster sound system so that it really uh, rattles the room as it runs by. ES44s, so this makes sense. This is new. We've got super bass. We've got a what they call a kinematic pilot. I guess it looks like it's a single piece, but it does move a bit with the truck. It's a new design uh, for closer coupling on curves. That's interesting. Uh, 054 curves. So let's see here. We got BNSF, Canadian Pacific, CSX, NS, Union Pacific. Um, but there it is. UT UP fans, you can uh, let us know. If it, am I imagining things or is that not quite right? I'm not sure on that. Anyway, so those are the ES44s, nice scale legacy locomotives. We got them in some other schemes. These will be NS Heritage, Central Georgia, Lehigh Valley. Whoops, go back. Monongahela, where did it go? Monongahela, NW, and Penzi. Okay, so NS Heritage schemes in the ES44. Oh, CSX Heritage schemes. Okay, these have come out just recently. Uh, I like the way NS does it better, but you know, CSX doing their thing. So it's got a CSX cab and then the heritage colors on the back. We got B&O. We've got Conrail. We've got Chessing System. And to me, this is, this one just doesn't work. I mean, this is real based on the way CSX uh, painted it. Lionel's done a faithful copy here, but the way CSX did it. It is what it is, seaboard system, and uh, C and O. Okay, so moving on, SD45s. 
And these, uh, yeah, we've got them. Uh, we've got some details based on uh, the different road names, Santa Fe, and you can get it in the Super Base version as well. Delaware and Hudson, I always like that scheme. That was sharp. And over here, we've got Rio Grande, and we've got uh, Redding, and we've got some differences in the cab. Notice, like here, we've got the drip line versus not on the Rio Grande. Um, the little extra bump out for the double control stands. Uh, Frisco, okay. And Southern Pacific, and notice the headlight package, uh, typical with uh, SP and the low headlight. So they did do some uh, road name specific details on those SD45s. Ah, uh, E6, the classic shovel nose E6. We got B and O's, and again, you can get it in the super base version. Seaboard. Oh, okay. And so we've got these uh, clear sided versions that were used in the World's Fair so that uh, people could see the inner workings. Uh, although it looked a little different at the World's Fair, they didn't quite see the uh, Lionel components there. Uh, instead, they saw the uh, the EMD 567 engines. So, uh, interesting concept with the uh, smooth sides. Of course, it's not exactly uh, <laughs> what they would have seen at the World's Fair. But, uh, but interesting idea with that. Okay, we got our Southern Green. And we've got Milwaukee Road. So, uh you can uh, update your Hiawatha set with uh, with E sixes if you uh, don't want the uh, the high the uh, Hiawatha steamer. Rock Island, okay. So we got a couple of different Rock Island schemes, um, and we've got a a B typical Rock Island multiple different paint schemes. We got the Super Base here, and we've got uh, UP in the City of San Francisco scheme. All righty. Oh, uh, Rock Island commuter cars. So, uh, <laughs> folks who were uh, familiar in the Chicago area uh, would have seen these from, what, the 1930s to uh, late 70s, maybe early 80s. Uh, those were your typical Rock Island commuter cars. So we've got, a, I'm guessing, a four-pack. Yeah, four pack, ooh, $9.99 or four cars. They look nice. And, okay, so we have uh, E5, which is basically the, an E6, but um, the Burlington version with the aluminum sides. Clickety clack sounds in motion. Oh, okay, that's the stick with the passenger cars, but the diner. Uh, we've got sounds. Simulated corrugations with shadow paint. So. Well, they're not actually aluminum clad, but they're painted to kind of simulate the look of the aluminum. I'd like to see that in person, uh, see how well they pulled that off. Whoops. And uh, passenger cars to go with the set. And this is more of a Burlington set. This is not that beaver tail observation from the Hiawatha. This is a different set. Um, so we got a two-pack and a four-pack. Yeah, that does, does look like um, Burlington... It's Bud Cars. There we go. All right. Okay. SW8s. So these will actually go around 031 curves. And so we've got a couple of these. We got what? Detroit Edison with already kilowatt there. I think it's kind of cool here in Lackawanna. Reading and Northern, a more uh, contemporary scheme. What do we have here? Oh, Texas and Pacific. Don't see that, that too often. Air Force uh, with a strobe. And the Chicago Northwestern. So, a selection of switchers there. Oh, U28. This is a, a model you don't see a lot of. It's kind of a weird model, interim model between the U25 and the U30 anyway. Um, Conrail, yeah, Penn Central had quite a few of these. L&N, uh, yeah, although I don't remember them ever being that clean. <laughs> yeah. L&N fans of the 70s, you can uh, recall that. Those, those were mostly covered in soot. Uh, probably the same with the Penzi versions. Okay, so um, got, what, two road numbers in each one? Uh, and these 031, 031, and 649.99, okay, Penn Central. 
Southern Pacific, and again with the SP-type headlight package here, prototypic, and the location of the bell. SP's bell is always up there, so, and then UP with the strobe. I remember seeing a lot of these. And seaboard system with the radio antenna up there. So, yeah, again, road name-specific details. That's cool. Oh, we got our Berkshire again. Um... So we got our legacy Berkshire with a freight set, kind of like what they did with the triplex. Oh, this is a different Berkshire. This is 779. So you have another option for your um, <clears throat> nickel plate Berks. And part of it, you get your hot box reefer as part of the set. Atomic Energy Commission. So this is harkening back to the all the post-war stuff from the 50s. <laughs> Uh, just with updated uh, scale, with scale equipment. So we got our Jeep 9. Uh, we've got our radioactive waste cars. Uh, looks a little more modern here. Oh, they glow in the dark <laughs> with the radiation. That makes sense. <laughs> oh, and a Jeep 9B. Okay, to go along with that. Got to throw that in there. And what else we got? We got a tank car, caboose, a box car. And they all glow in the dark as well. Okay. All right. Um, oh, Illinois Central City of Miami. Okay, so we've got some passenger cars here. Uh, they're not introducing a new locomotive, are they? I see this E6 here, but I don't remember seeing uh, that featured, but there it is. Okay, it's part of, it comes part of the set. Okay. So you get your E6 and all the passenger cars... Fourteen ninety nine for the whole set. Okay. Or for this whole set, these are add-ons. Okay, these three cars are add-ons. You get the four car set and that for your um fourteen ninety nine. Okay. All right, so we are still in the legacy section here. Uh, we've got some more wood sided passenger cars, NYC and Penzi, if you uh want to pick up a ten wheeler and make your own set with those. And more Looney Tunes. We had some of those in the last catalog. We've got some new things here. A Wile E. Coyote, a couple of Wile E. Coyotes, the Acme Copter, a giant magnet, uh, both some actual uh, interior design. Okay, so we got our 20 foot trailers on flat car. Um, what do we have here? The um, protective umbrella, high bounce springs. And <laughs> instant tunnel paint at me. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that was part of a lot of different uh, Coyote Roadrunner jokes over the years. So uh, if you're into that, we've got that. Okay, so we got a bunch of hot box reefers. Looks like these new ones have lighting effects in addition to the smoke that the previous editions had. You got electric coupler and you got flickering lights, smokes, screeching, and crew dialogue of a hot box. Okay, so Santa Fe, Fruit Growers Express, NYC, and Pacific Fruit Express. Okay, so the return of the hot box. Oh, we got milk cars. All right. Uh, what do you have? Had to get it there right away. We got the Erie Milk car. We got, uh, all Nashville, Chattanooga, St. Louis. O'Leary Dairies in Chicago. Ha ha ha. O'Leary the cow. <laughs> and in Strasburg, uh, for, uh, fans of the uh, contemporary tourist railroad. All right. Union Pacific World War II. Okay. So it looks like they took some of the posters. That they made uh, during World War II and made fox cars out of them, and so these are in three packs. Okay, so you can buy three packs of the commemorative poster cars. Three pack for two forty nine ninety nine. Scale cars, interesting graphics. Um, so historic. Oh, and a caboose to go with it for one twenty nine. Oh, and uh, one with freight sound. So it kind of sounds like uh, the clickety clack and squeals and pops and such of a actual uh, freight car going by. Uh, if uh, that's something that you're interested in. 
Okay, Warfleet sounds cars. We got the uh, Chessy system. Now, with this, these PS1 cars now, uh, these are to represent the transition. These cars would have originally have been built uh, when rooflocks were still in place. And you see that they took the rooflock off. They did that detail. Anyway, so this would be post-1972 um, or 74. I think 72 when they took the rooflocks off off of uh off of cars okay so these representing older cars they've got the roof locks on them and the taller ladders so get the details depending on the era your era okay great northern illinois central gulf and okay so again because it's icg instead of straight ic this would be after when the uh, roof locks came off rfnp All right, uh, our 8,000 gallon tank cars. 99.99, several different colors. Okay, and, they, and then this is still in our legacy section. So these are still scale cars. Uh, more of those uh, 20 foot uh, trailer on flat cars. Actual rubber tires and flaps on the trailers. Nice details. KD, REA, Southern Pacific. And more Texas and Pacific. Southern Pacific would have been uh, very important. Uh, they were an early adopter of the uh, trailer on flat car concept. Okay, so now we have two base cement hoppers, AC, or PS2, not ACF. These are Pullman Standard uh, cement hoppers. Conrail, again, these are scale cars, $90 each. Nice details. Uh, these should go around 031. Yes, they do. Uh, because these are short cars. All right. And you can also get them weathered uh, the way most of these cars really look. These things take a beating and they get pretty nasty before anybody uh, worries about repainting these things. All right. Uh, um, so this is a Union Pacific CA1 class caboose. Uh, in Northern Pacific. Here we go. Union Pacific, a couple of different schemes. A safety scheme, Western Pacific. Okay, that's an interesting design. Um, oh, and this is a, a Pennsylvania uh, N, N6B. There we go. Wood caboose. These are from the Pennsylvania. But interesting uh, arched roof on the uh, cupola section there. So while we have D&H, DT and I, I guess I could go with your Berkshire from before. Lionel lines, of course. Strasburg and two Pennsylvania versions. Um, Lionel Vision. Okay, so these are going to be equipped with command options. Let's see. Uh, electrocoupler, rail sounds that play the freight sounds, control. Okay, so so yeah, these are the uh, super uh, detailed, super uh, featured versions of the caboose all right so we're still still in our scale cars we got uh, these are 50 foot 50 foot steel sided box cars we got uh, bna we got central georgia we've got the original norfolk southern don't be confused today's norfolk southern is not the same railroad although the original ns has been merged into it's part of ns um but this is not the black engines with the thoroughbred on it. Um, and then Sioux Line. Oh, and we've got some wood-sided reefers. Lots of those been made these days. Although these look like 40-footers instead of the 36-footers that uh, MTH has been cranking out. Okay, lots of wood-sided reefers. Swift Premium. Okay. $79.99. About the same price as MTH's. Uh, 50 foot tank cars. Okay, these are more modern cars. Uh, you can get them individually or in a three pack. Okay. ADM, BNSF, Cargill. Yeah, these are typical and GATX. Uh, good contemporary cars. All twin bay hopper cars uh, with period appropriate journal bearings on the trucks. Um, yeah, 031 operation. And again, they come in a three pack or by themselves. CNO, Erie, Nickel Plate, Milwaukee Road. Okay. 
Okay, now we're getting more to traditional, um, traditional, oh, these are all going to be Lion Chief, though, rather than conventional control. Something about Lion Chief and the universal remote, That noth nothing new there. Okay, so now we have Berkshires that work with our traditional line. These look like they're based off of the, uh, uh, excuse me, based off of the Polar Express versions that have been out for quite a while. Uh, but here's one in nickel plate 759, another famous one, Paramarquette 1223 instead of 1225, CNO, and LN representing Big Emma 1984. Yeah, okay. All right, so we've got some P32s here for Amtrak. Uh, these go around 031 curves, and we have several of their heritage schemes here. We got our Amtrak, oh, and then some Metro North Heritage schemes, including the Conrail. All uh, running. What are we? Oh, Doodle Bugs. But now, but there was a Christmas Doodle Bug that came out right before Christmas. Then we got it in multiple paint schemes. Uh, these go around 031, despite their length. That's cool. Um, B and O, uh, Burlington, East Broadtop. Huh? That works. And over here we had what GM and O on top. Yeah, GM and O, NYC, Northern Pacific, and Rock Island. Kind of looks like the uh, what was the e EB six uh, that used to be on the uh, the Rocky Mountain Rocket. <laughs> Very similar to that. Okay, so traditional set. Uh, so what we have here, we got our traditional looking two four two. Going back to the 1930s, this is tried and true. Um, we got a box car. Uh, we got a peekaboo car where the character's going up and down and your standard caboose. Um, okay, so this is the Ol uh, the frozen Olaf set. Okay, uh, for four seventy nine for the set. Okay, and then we got John Deere. This is a good, whoops, there we go. All right, again, we've got the 242. I don't know if they did something to the trucks to make the tender higher, but it just makes it look, at least in the picture, too big um, for our 242 here. So we've got a hopper car with bales of hay in it. we got a couple of tractors and our lighted N5C porthole caboose. Am I missing anything? 031 for $429.99. Uh, and you can get a barn, too. Okay, that continues their licensing. Okay, Looney Tunes. This also was started in the previous catalog. We've got our Looney Tunes set. Um, this looks like the same one from last year. I think we've got our FT, the boxcar. We've got our chase car and the regular caboose. But we've got uh, the Acme Factory. I seem to recall that being in last year's catalog as well. And a couple of new box cars. What do we have? Oh, we already saw these. Um, the copter car and the uh, giant magnet car. We saw these already um, over in the uh, the other section. And then your generic uh, freight set. Good old 9L lines. Now notice the engine here. Looks like we've got a new version of the old 2035 uh, originally 262, then they later went to 264. That is different. And, uh, but the cars, we got a regular SP caboose, gondola, take car, and you can get an, a barn to go along with it. But yeah, this looks like uh, maybe we're uh, moving on to new power in our uh, starter sets. Four twenty nine ninety nine for your basic set here. Oh, yeah, and here we go. Here's more of them. Okay, so we've got it in Santa Fe, we got it in Pennsylvania. That should be a popular choice, and we've got it in U.S. Army. Okay, and now we've got uh, the 242 being redesigned. So this design goes all the way back to the 1930s. Uh, then it came out as the Scouts, and then it was the 200 series throughout the 1960s. MPC made a ton of these in the 70s, uh, early 80s. So here's one actually using an old post-war number, 242. Uh, they did add some of our uh, gear, um, some of our side rods back in. That's a nice touch. Not quite as detailed as the original uh, pre-war version, 
but better than most of the things that have been made since uh, 1948. Uh, so there we go. So I <clears throat> got it in Lionel Lines, uh, Burlington. Ooh, a nice bright NYC pacemaker. Okay, continuing on, we've got FTs. These have been around for a while, but some new paint schemes. Penzi, Union Pacific, Lionel Lines, that's uh, bright. And then of the ubiquitous Santa Fe and uh, Texas Special. Um, so these are dummies to go with uh, previously released passenger sets, and you can get the powered versions for uh, 300 with all of the bells and whistles and everything else that comes along with uh, new locomotives. And then we've got the short versions <laughs> of our ET44s uh, to go around 031 curves. We've got our CSX, BNSF, and US Army. That's kind of sharp. $300 uh, for those uh, for those details. You got the thicker handrails. These are meant to be, uh, you know, handled more by uh, young hands. Give them a little more traditional look as well. Okay, speeders. Now these, uh, I believe this was original K-Line tooling. This would have come from uh, from that. I haven't seen these in a while. So these, of course, have uh, some command control. These will go around 027. We've got figures inside. 189, Chessy, CNW, Rock Island. Whoops. Uh, Army Transportation Corps, Area 51. To continue that line, and we've got some 027 passenger cars. So we got a nice full observation here from Santa Fe to go along with the uh, the Santa Fe set, and Lionel lines will go along with uh, whatever we got. <laughs> we got Joshua, and we've got Cohen, and we got a baggage car tradition and vision. Okay, that makes sense. All right, so $100, $120 a car. That's, I think that's a, a little steep on that one, but we'll see. So here it is in other schemes. We got it in Penzi. Yeah, same type of designs. And the Union Pacific. Now, maybe if they had, uh, instead of doing all these different paint schemes, if they just came out with one generic paint scheme, maybe in light L lines, uh, it probably would have been cheaper than uh, uh, probably get the unit cost down to uh, lower the price. Okay, so continuing the Harry Potter, we got the uh, showing off their cool graphics here on these Harry Potter cars from the different movies. Sharp graphics, I will say. Uh, and then here we've got <laughs> the Dementors Aquarium car. I'm sure those are cool floating around in there as the car operates and then some hogwarts express box cars okay so if you're into the harry potter thing they've got uh continuing that line justice league this started with last year's catalog we continuing that uh the flash which was of course a bomb as a movie a uh, sharp looking locomotive though um aquaman wouldn't that have been better as an aquarium car i don't know uh, take car kind of works. Um, okay, we brought back the original security car with the bat signal. If you're into that, 159 uh, with the lights. Superman steel I beam car, and apparently with removable loads. So you can see the graphics on there. Oh, and then the security car comes back with a green lantern with the uh, the the signal there as well. So. Some interesting, uh, if you're into those, uh, Disney and Thomas Kincaid. So again, catching two sets of collectors at once, the Disney folks, the Kincaid folks. So we've got a, a Mickey and Minnie, um, sweetheart car for year round. Uh, we've got a Christmas car and we got another Christmas car. So to get your Christmas, you are Disney and your Kincaid people all at the same time. $100 each. Again, really sharp graphics, I will say. And continuing with the Angela Trotta Thomas line, we've got one of the 675 appropriate for this catalog. And a bunch of F3s with a patriotic flag. 
Okay, $100 each for those. Barbie. Well, uh, <laughs> I guess with the success of the movie, this works. Kind of reminds me of Lady Lionel, all right? Obviously be for the collectors out there. Uh, too much pink for me, but hey. And Wizard of Oz. Uh, we got some Wizard of Oz boxcars here for the 85th anniversary of that film. Bob Ross. Okay, taking advantage of their graphics. We've got some uh, Bob Ross paintings here. Uh, you get two sides of that boxcar, two different paintings. Same thing here, two different paintings on two different sides. Okay, that is kind of bizarre. <laughs> the water tower uh, decorated like that. Uh, uh, yeah, that's different. Uh, and an art gallery, that kind of makes sense. I could see that um, you know, adding a nice little uh, shop to the layout. Okay, Mr. Rogers. Well, okay. Maybe for the adult collector, because I don't think today's kids even know who Mr. Rogers is. Um, let's see, a sound box car plays... Mr. Rogers sounds on a timed loop. Interesting. Okay, and again, both sides. Aquarium car, all for the fish. Okay, so you see him looking at the fish. And uh, we got some scenes of uh, Fred and the uh, the series there. Okay, crane cars. <laughs> okay, so we've got a Chevy car to tow your Ford and a Ford car to tow your Chevy, uh, depending on which your... Uh, references. I do like that we went back to the six axle trucks from the original crane cars. Those float your boat. And then we got the, uh, the Anheuser-Busch collection. Again, that started last year. Got a Wanna Tower, a couple of reefer cars. These all go around 031, I do believe. Does it say? Yes, 031. And more of the Anheuser-Busch. And then I guess we have a Lionel, Lenny Auger, and a water tower for that. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> okay, um, we have our World War II pinups. I don't think these were actual nose arts on anything, but just kind of in the spirit of that, you had a P-38 with some interesting artwork, a SBD Dauntless, and B-17. So, if you're into uh, the World War II planes, inspired by nose art, and we've got some military generic cars here, or generic army car. A nice Sherman tank there on the flat car. And our triple dome tank car goes back to the post-war era as well. Yeah, these are all traditional size cars, our basic traditional UP, Western Pacific, if you don't have enough guns already, a single dome SP, Suzy Q, Blue Coal, again, our Lin Bay Hopper going all the way back to 1948, uh, and our gondola with canisters, again, recreating the post war period at a new uh, lettering. Okay, this is the uh, high cube car uh, from the 70s, but now with graffiti on it. Uh, there are some folks who are into the, uh, into the graffiti artwork on their cars. The unibody car with graffiti. Ferromex auto car with lots of graffiti. So there are collectors for that. Uh, let's see, the East Broad Top. Okay, commemorating the East Broad Top 150th anniversary. Western Pacific, oh, the California Zephyr. Okay. Uh, again, really colorful. And uh, for American history, the first Continental Congress, two sides to the car, differently decorated. Uh, and then personalized. Okay, add your own photo to the graphics, graduation, Christmas, anniversaries, uh, birthday, Father's Day, Mother's Day. And now we get into the holiday stuff, Halloween. Here's our 242 again. Oh, okay, so we have... Uh, our wood, wood passenger cars, we've got a glow-in-the-dark version for Halloween. 519 a pair. Uh, this is the milk car, but at a Halloween version. 
the Penzi Caboose and also Glow in the Dark, the eerie, like, get it? Eerie? Like, yeah, uh-huh, for Halloween. <laughs> All right, so for Supper Sale, we got our 242 we talked about before, uh, the FT, or uh, the good old Bump and Go Trolley in a Halloween version, and Halloween version of the 027 Passenger cars. Makes sense. Separate sale passenger cars with that. Uh, okay. Glow in the dark water towers. Fright liner. Ha ha ha. Fast fright service. Uh, for your <laughs> auto racks, I guess. Uh, <laughs> Ichabod crane. Ha. Huh. Ichabod crane. Well, okay, so... Somebody at Lionel knows their puns. Um, okay, and Angela Trotta Thomas Halloween decorated covered bridge. And a Halloween barn with spooky LED lights. Now we're into Christmas. This is probably going to be a big section. Christmas has been a big part of Lionel sales for uh, a while. And of course the Polar Express, as we said before, the 20th anniversary. So it looks like we've got some special, uh, these would be scale items. A kind of more traditional looking uh, observation car here and st- <clears throat> instead of that uh, rounded end from the movie uh, we've got a red berkshire i believe a bell car a special coach with snow covered okay and is oh this is still the legacy but different colors we've got blue we've got our regular black and our red special editions for the anniversary you can get the steamer in different colors this is the more traditional rounded end observation, but again, these are scale cars for the uh, the for the Polar Express. And now our more traditional size. This is uh, here's our special logo for the 20th anniversary to set these aside from your regular Polar Express traditional cars. Uh, and there's that believe bell car again, sound box car. Uh, special graphics on the locomotive as well. Okay, so this is the Lion Chief Plus. Uh, so it looks a lot like the Lion Chief version, but it has better controls, probably better sounds. So that's why this is five ninety nine for just the locomotive versus uh, the set was five twenty nine because the uh, the difference <coughs> in the control and sound. Of the Lion Chief versus Lion Chief Plus. My voice is almost gone. Yay. Okay, and so then we, then we have 1225. And we have a uh, Polar Express P42. Uh, interesting. Doodlebug. And uh, our speeder in a Polar Express version. Okay, Polar Express wind-up hand car. Might as well, since they... Uh, had the wind-up tooling for the Mickey and Minnie hand car, so why not do other wind-up versions as well? Presents car. And uh, your own personalized 20th anniversary Polar Express box car. More accessories. We've got the special 20th anniversary water towers. We've got Billy's house. We've got uh, the freight terminal. This is based on old K-Line tooling. This was a really cool K-Line accessory. And you park the boxcar here, and it makes it look like the packages are going into the boxcar, uh, whatever car that you park there. That's a, that's a cool accessory. Uh, we got some American Flyer and HO Polar Express as well. Oh, here we go, a Christmas Hiawatha. That's, uh, that's an interesting idea. Uh, kind of cool colors, but it's, it's a uh, dasher. Ha, ha. Uh, yeah, it makes sense uh, for a speedy locomotive. And then you've got your cars, again, the Hiawatha cars with the uh, the Christmas colors. Okay. All right. So we've also got the 10-wheeler with a Christmas set with the milk car with the two milk cars and a passenger car or the separate sale wood-sided caboose. You can get Deer Dash. Oh my goodness, Deer Dash. <laughs> um, and uh, your eggnog milk car as well. Well, I almost said 027. This is a Lion Chief set, but with the FT. 
and with the redesigned 027 traditional streamlined cars from the post-war era, but in a nice uh, Christmas theme. And then we see again the package terminal, Sled X. Oh my goodness, they're thick with the puns. <laughs> All right, and more Christmas stuff. Uh, we got another Berkshire Upper Mountain Road. We got uh, another one of the uh, the two six twos when we're Wonderland. We've got another two four two, and then we got another um, <clears throat> ET forty four. So lots and lots and lots of Christmas to choose from. A totally different Christmas passenger car set here. And still more Christmas. We got the speeder. We've got box cars. The most wonderful time of the year. We've got peppermint <laughs> transport. And we've got some Thomas Kincaid Christmas cars. And a Thomas Kincaid covered bridge to go with our Angela Toronto Thomas from a few pages before. And we've got HO and American Flyer Christmas stuff. Okay, so now we have the Amtrak passenger station remodeled for Lionelville. Oh, we have it in Amtrak as well. Uh, here's an Amtrak version of our freight on the shed there. <laughs> our infrared detector. We've got assorted light posts. We're getting into accessories now. And then this is all stuff that... Uh, was in previous catalogs, but is still out there. So quite a bit of new stuff. Um, some of it, yes, on the pricier end. Some of it, not too far out of the ballpark of what other manufacturers are doing compared to, say, MTH and Atlas. Probably, uh, you know, pricier than what we might be getting from Menards, pricier than what you might be able to get on the secondary market, of course, with uh, Lionel Postwar and MPC and stuff like that. Uh, but used stuff is always going to be cheaper anyway. So so overall, uh, some really neat stuff. I don't know if I'm going to be buying any of it myself, especially the stuff at the front of the catalog. Really neat to look at, uh, but uh, kind of tight on the wallet. So anyway, so that is the preview. Uh, that is our first look here at the catalog. Again, I'll be doing a uh, kind of a summary version as part of Tuesday's episode of What's New in O-Gage. Uh, but just thought we'd go through page by page and uh, see what our reaction was on, uh, on this catalog. So that's going to be all for today, but we'll see you in upcoming episodes. Tomorrow, we'll have our uh, new long-form uh, video for this week. And then on uh, next Tuesday comes our new version of of the uh, What's New and O-Gage, which will have, again, a quick recap of what's in here, plus new items from Menards uh, and MTH and uh, possibly some others as well. So that's all for today. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time on Toy Train Tips and Tricks.